this video, we're gonna build an enclosure for a Dayton Audio MaxX 10 inch subwoofer. This is a budget friendly alternative to Dayton Audio's Ultimax and Reference Series subwoofers. It was designed specifically for use in cars where we oftentimes have small sealed and small ported enclosures. This build starts off like virtually every other build does. I'm gonna head down to the local big box home improvement center where I'm gonna pick up some sheet goods. I'm gonna use some MDF for this particular project and I always have them break it down to more manageable sizes so I can take it home, cut it down on the table saw. During the design process, I usually make a cut list and then I typically will jot down some notes just by hand on how I wanna plan out my cuts. My goal here is to minimize the number of times that I move the saw. So every time I make a cut of a certain dimension, I'm gonna set the saw for that cut, make all of those cuts at the same time, and then reset the saw for the next series of cuts. This will give a better overall fit and minimize the gaps and the air leaks in the enclosure. Now, before I do any of that, I've actually got to design the enclosure. I like to use WinISD. It's a free program. You can just download it from their website. I'll make sure I give you a link down in the description. After you enter the TS parameters in WinISD, it's just a matter of adjusting the port tuning and the enclosure size until you get the shape of the sound that you want. Tune it low for home theater. Tune it a little higher for car audio. Tune it how you think it might sound good. Before you finish up in WinISD, you're gonna to wanna to check the port airspeed velocity to make sure you don't have chuffing, and you're gonna to wanna to check the cone excursion to make sure you're not overdriving and generating distortion from exceeding X max. Now we're ready to go back to the saw and finish cutting everything down, but not quite yet. I like to go ahead and draw out some plans just so that I can visualize how things are gonna to go together. This always makes it easier to put the thing together during the assembly process. When I have time, I draw the the plans that make them available to y'all, you can catch them by just going down to the merch shelf and going to my spring store and you can buy the plans through there. Okay, now we can go back out to the garage and finish cutting. <laughs> Now that that's done, I'm gonna use a circle jig on my router to make my speaker cutouts. For this build, I'm gonna be using a double baffle and I'm gonna recess the driver. There's nothing worse than making these cuts only to discover that you've made the wrong size hole. So I always cut a test piece to make sure the driver is gonna fit. The other trick I've learned over the years is to make the cutouts in multiple passes. For a quarter inch router bit, you really should only be cutting a quarter inch deep. Now this is three quarter inch material, so I should probably make three passes, but I'm a little too impatient for that. So I'm gonna cut it out in two instead of trying to make the cutout in one pass. You'll notice that I have a spoil board stuck to the workbench with double-sided tape, and the workpiece is taped to the spoil board. This protects the workbench, and by taping the spoil board to the workpiece, the circle doesn't move at the end of the cutout. I find that this gives a better cut than just clamping the workpiece down. Now I've been using double-sided carpet tape for this because it's cheap and readily available. It sticks pretty well and it does a fantastic job. I'm going completely overkill on this and I'm gonna install two braces. The type of brace I'm using is what Vince Dickinson calls a shelf brace in the loudspeaker design cookbook. After marking out these lines with a speed square, I rough cut these with a jigsaw and then finish them using a flush trim bit. You'll notice that I'm using a different kind of tape. I got this from Amazon. It's half inch double-sided woodworking tape. A four pack of 36 yard tape was only about 16 bucks, which is a lot cheaper than the template tape that some companies market for car audio use. I like this better than the carpet tape that I was using earlier in the video because I don't have to trim it down to a half inch width, but it does not seem to stick as well, so you've got to use a little bit more of it. To finish up the brace, I come back over it with a round over bit. To be perfectly honest, making these braces, uh, it's my least favorite part of building an enclosure. It's time consuming and it generates a ton of dust. Now, if you want all the benefits of a shelf brace, there are different ways you can go about bracing your enclosure. You can make a brace that doesn't stretch all the way across the enclosure so it only touches three sides of the enclosure. Then you don't have to cut out all these windows. We'll talk more about bracing later when I assemble the enclosure. While I have the jigsaw out, I'm gonna go ahead and rough cut the port opening on both baffles. I'll do the router work later when I mount the baffles. Speaking of baffles, there are different ways to mount the port to the baffle in a slot ported enclosure. 
In the past, I've just made the outer port wall longer and I didn't make a port cut out in the baffle. This way is more work, but it makes it easier to add some extra design elements. I don't know if it's worth the trouble. You tell me in the comments if you think doing it this way is better. Up until a couple of months ago, I've never tried to carpet an enclosure, so carpeting is a relatively new thing for me. Before I started my channel, everything that I built was a home audio speaker, and it was either made out of plywood or it was veneered and I had stained it. And a lot of my earlier speaker builds were like this one right here, where I had either a veneered or an exposed plywood on the front, and then on the sides and the back, I would do something like a dark texture or a paint. This is a textured coating called Duratex on this one. And I'm, I really like the way it looks and I love that high contrast. And this right here is a lot easier than carpet. If you're gonna use carpet or vinyl or something like that, you're gonna be doing some more prep work. And that's one of the things I've learned over the last few months is the importance of doing that prep work on the enclosure to make it easier to carpet later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a rabbiting bit to cut a groove around the edges of the side pieces of my enclosure. And then I'm gonna use that same rabbit bit to make a groove on what's gonna be the underside of my inner baffle. These grooves are gonna give me a place to tuck the carpet and they're gonna give me an edge or a seam that I can use to run my knife around in order to cut the carpet. That's gonna make carpeting a lot easier later on. As I get better at this and go back over my footage after I record it, I start to see some little tricks that can save time and effort and speed the process up. I didn't think about this when I was making my braces. I put a round over on all of my braces, then I set the braces aside and I started working on this baffle and lo and behold, I needed a round over on the baffle as well. What I should have done was started off with the rabbiting bit and rabbited out this baffle and then worked on the braces. And when I had the braces flush trimmed, I should have grabbed the roundover bit and done this roundover on the baffle and the roundover on the braces at the same time. And that would save a couple of router bit change outs, which can actually save a lot of time. And so while I've still got the roundover bit inside the router, I'm gonna go ahead and start on some of the assembly process. I'm gonna go ahead and build my port assembly because the port assembly is gonna need some roundovers on it. I'm just gonna put this thing together with wood glue and brad nails and then over to the router to hit those roundovers. When designing this assembly, I included a brace and I designed it so that the brace was the same size as the first port wall. Not only will that put a brace close to the woofer for added support, it'll be a lot easier to make sure the port is aligned properly in the enclosure later when I assemble it. And it's gonna provide that front to back bracing from the baffle to the port, plus it'll serve as a port support. Now it's time for my favorite part, the assembly. This is the part where it begins to look like you're actually making something as the enclosure begins to take shape. If you want to see the assembly process, click on the subscribe button right here. It's going to be the next video. And if you want to see the entire Max X10 playlist, I'm going to put all the videos in the playlist right over here. Before I go, I need to thank my patrons over on Patreon, especially $25 patron Dylan. 